Hey guys, Jared here, and today we're going to be talking about how to convert a hex code into a UI color. It's something that's super useful, especially when you are trying to cross-manage colors from websites and whatnot. So this is going to be a very simple and nice method that's going to allow you to convert your hex codes into a usable UI color for Xcode. Hex code, X code, I, I know. <laughs> but yeah, this should be a great tutorial on it just explaining how hex codes work and how you should use them in your application. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and create a new Xcode project. This will be a single view application in which we're gonna go ahead and call this color two. Name it whatever you want, but also we're gonna be creating a file in here, and this is the exact file that you would create in your own project. So if you have a project already, just create this file. So we're gonna go ahead and say file, new file. This will be a Swift file, and I'm gonna go ahead and call mine extensions. I like to keep my extensions bundled up in one place, and this is just a nice way of doing it. Then once you're inside of your extensions, go ahead and import UI kit because UI color is in there, so we need it. Now we're gonna go ahead and create an extension for our UI color, so go ahead and put that in there. Then once you have your extension created, go ahead and create a function that will extend on a UI color. So this will be color from hex, and then inside of this, you're gonna go ahead and expect a string, which will be, of course, your hex string. And then finally, you just want to return value off of this, which is of course going to be a UI color. So the first thing that we want to do is make sure that there's no spaces or what or new lines inside of our hex string. So in order to do this, we're going to go ahead and say var hex string will be equal to hex dot trimming characters in the which you're going to go ahead and put in a character set. Our set will be white spaces and new lines. And then finally, after that, with hex codes, you want to make sure that everything is uppercase. So dot uppercase. And we're good. Now, of course, this isn't a massive deal if you don't do this, it's just a prevention. If you accidentally have a new line or a white space or something, it's not gonna crash your application. And we're gonna continue that prevention by doing whether or not it has a hashtag in front of it. Hashtags are useful when you're coding on the internet, but not for Swift. We wanna go ahead and get rid of that. So we're gonna go ahead and say if hex string dot has prefix in the which we're expecting a hashtag. And then inside of there, you're gonna say hex string dot remove in the which you're gonna go ahead and remove the first index or that hashtag. So the first index will be hex string dot start index. And then finally, we're gonna see whether or not it has six characters. So it's pretty easy, you just say, if hex string dot count is not equal to six, then you're gonna go ahead and return a different color. I just put mine as UI color dot black. I'll explain exactly why we need six characters in just a second, but first off, let's start programming our RGB values. So in order to do this, we're gonna go ahead and say var RGB colon UINT32 will be equal to zero. So right now we have our RGB value set at zero, but it's important to note that this is a 32-bit integer. So what we're gonna do is convert our hex string into this 32-bit integer. And then with that, we can go ahead and pluck it apart into the various R, G, and B values. So to start this off, we need to go ahead and say scanner, open parentheses, and then we're gonna go ahead and feed in our hex string. And then now we wanna go ahead and take that hex string and convert it into that 32-bit integer. It's actually pretty simple. You just go ahead and say dot scan hex int 32, in the which you go ahead and provide it with your RGB value. Now, once you put it in chest RGB, you get this little error that it says unsafe mutable pointer. And basically we just wanna make Make sure that it's safe for the program to do this and in order to do that you just put an ampersand right in front of RGB and basically what that ampersand does is allow that function or that scan hex in 32 right into the RGB value itself so there you have it um, now we have our hex string converted into our RGB value now let's go ahead and break it up into the red green and blue so what we're gonna do is go ahead and say return UI color in the which you're gonna go ahead and look for the RGB and alpha. You're gonna space it out however you like. And then from then on, as you can see, it's expecting some CG float values. So we need to go ahead and convert our int32 value into something that's readable as a CG float. So I'll explain it a little bit, but basically to start us off, we're gonna go ahead and say CG float open close parentheses in the which you're gonna start typing in RGB ampersand and then zero X FF0000. <laughs> Two Fs at the start and four zeros after. Then, once you're done with that, you're going to put that all in parentheses, and then you're going to put two angle brackets leading towards 16. Then for the blue, we're going to go ahead and do the exact same thing, except we're going to be switching it out with X0X00FF00. 
Then we're gonna go ahead into two angle brackets, and then this time it's going to be eight. And then finally for extracting our blue value, you're just actually going to say RGB ampersand 0x0000FF. And then that's it. You don't have any angle brackets there. And then as for our alpha, you can of course play around with that all you want, but I'll set it to 1.0 to make sure that it's opaque. Now with our values that we have here, this would actually be pretty correct in most circumstances, but this is not the way that Xcode handles things. Xcode likes to think of things from zero to one. Right now we have things going from zero to 255. Now basically with hex codes, the way that they work, if you look at just the red, let's say, those are gonna be the first two letters in your hex code. So now we're playing around with our red. Zero, zero is going to be your absolute lowest number. It's gonna be black. You're, you're not gonna have any red in there. And then your highest value is actually going to be FF. And to explain this, you just go zero to nine, A to F. That's just how hexadecimals work. And so when you hit A, you can actually think of that as 10. And then B will be 11, and then F, of course, will be 15. So it goes 0 to 15. Now that logic only applies if you're in the second value place. If you're in the first value place, that is actually going to give you increments of 16. So 0 will be 0, and then as soon as you hit F, that's going to be actually 240. So if you want the absolute most of one color, it's actually going to be FF, which is of course 240 plus 15, 255. That's how we get 0 to 255. And that value is actually applied on a lot of websites, but Xcode doesn't like that value. They like 0 to 1. So what we need to do is go ahead and say divide by 255 to all of our CG flow values that we have there. Now to explain what RGB ampersand 0xff0000 and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, but basically we're trying to eliminate all of the other values that aren't red. The first group of letters will be your reds, the second group of letters will be your greens, and finally for your blues, they will be the third group of letters, or the last two. And basically what you're doing when you say RGB ampersand 0xff, you're feeding it through a filter and you're just eliminating all the other values that don't include the binary values that or make up the red. And basically what you see happening with those angle brackets 16 is right now it's recognizing that red value as a very large value in binary because binary grows from right to left. So those first two values are going to be larger. So what we need to do is shrink them down to something that will be readable as a smaller value and more towards what we're looking for. And that same logic applies when we go to our green. So RGB ampersand 0x 00FF, that's focusing on the greens, eliminating the others, and then shrinking it down. By the way, if I'm getting any of this wrong, please let me know in the comments below and I'll pin your comments because I'm trying to understand this all myself. And to my understanding, that, uh, that made logical sense in my mind. But there you have it. Now we have our hex code converted into what is an RGB value and made it into a UI color. So now let's go ahead and create a color and feed it a hex code. So as promised, I wanna go ahead and apply this color as an extension. So I'm gonna go ahead and say static let universal blue equal UI color, open close parentheses, dot color from hex in the which we're gonna go ahead and provide it with a hex value. Now, let's figure out what, how to get a hex value. So in order to do this, I'm gonna go back over to my main dot storyboard, click on the background view, and then we're gonna try changing the background color to bring up our color picker. And then once you have your color picker in there, you're gonna to go to your sliders and make sure you select it on your RGB sliders. And there you can mess around with the color and you can see at the bottom there, we have a hex code. And you can just go ahead and take that hex code and apply it right into your application. So I chose a mostly blue color, so it's gonna be 34E5FF. FF, of course, is our strongest. So as you can see, that applies there with our blue value. But yeah, we have a universal blue color. Now let's go and apply this to our view controller. So we're gonna to go to the viewcontroller.swift and say color will be equal to uicolor.universalblue. And if you were to build and run this project, as you can see, we got a nice little blue color going on. Now another website that I love using for picking hex code values is colors.co and yeah, it's, it's just a random color generator and it's pretty nice. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a universal red with that. So I'm gonna say static let universal red equal UI color dot color with from hex and then you're just gonna put in your hex string. Apply that to the background color of your view and 
build and run that. And you should be able to see that when I compare it with Coolers.co and my own application, it's the same. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this quick little tutorial and hopefully I got my understanding of hex codes correctly. If I didn't, I'm sure I'll hear about it in the comments below. <laughs> anyway, have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.